Welcome once again to ExplainingComputers.com and to another video about classic PC hardware. Last time we looked at the mighty Toshiba T5100 notebook, and so this time I picked something smaller in the form of the Atari portfolio, the world's first ever palm top computer. Right, well here's my uh, Atari portfolio, the first portable computer I ever actually purchased. If you look underneath you'll see it's powered by uh, three AA batteries. This is an AA battery power computer. You've got about six weeks of battery life from one set of cells. If we turn it back the other way and also uh, open the thing up, there we have the uh, full Atari computer. This has got a full 63 key keyboard as you can see. Um, it's fitted out with an Intel 80C88 processor running at 4.92 megahertz and it's got inside here 128 kilobytes of RAM. And some of that RAM can be used as a virtual disk, as a C drive. In fact, the default C drive in this machine is actually a 32 kilobytes. You've also got a 256 kilobyte ROM, which stores both the operating system, which is DIP DOS 2.11, as well as a few applications I'll show you in a second. The display on this machine is a mono liquid crystal display of 40 by 8 characters, or that's 260 by 64 pixels. And you've also got a, a speaker over there so you can actually uh, hear what's going on and also communicate with that over a, a phone based modem. On the end of the machine, you can probably see there is a slot. This is a non standard slot which stores a memory card. Now, this, if I can get it out, is a, uh, this happens to be a 64 kilobyte memory device. This is actually battery backed. If you don't have a battery in this, all your data disappears. I used to store my 64 uh, kilobytes of data on that fairly happily, but always made sure I placed the battery on a regular basis. To turn the machine on, you just pressed a key on the keyboard. I always found it exciting to press the off button to turn it on, but you didn't have to. And then you were presented with a DOS looking prompt, as you can see. This wasn't actually DOS 2.11, it was a dipped clone of DOS, but it worked in pretty much the same way. So if I type, for example, a colon, I would change to the, uh, not the floppy drive, but the uh, battery backed um, flash card or battery backed memory card, I should say. And if I press DIR for directory, you'd see all the files stored on that card. To launch applications, as you can see, there were some legends on the keyboard. So if I press, for example, um, the Atari key and menu, I get access to all of them on a little menu. And I could go, for example, into the editor, which was the word processor on this device. There it is, look. I think it's function F1. It is. Amazing how you remember things in old PCs. And that gets us to a menu. I can go to files and I could go to, say, load. And I could type at A colon to get a list of things on A and there for example I could load in I don't know uh, let's load in battery text this was the file I remember I used to keep all the details on my batteries and if I went to function F5 we could use the whole 40 characters of the screen to look at things as you can say I obviously purchased this machine in June 1993 when I put in my first set of AA batteries and this plotted out how long they lasted look it was used quite intensively and I obviously used it all the way through to, what, 1998, when obviously other machines came into my life. You might ask, what did I do with this machine? Well, I mainly used it to make notes as a writer, notes on books and things. I think I've just seen that um, we could load in one of those very files. We go to A colon again. Um, I think the file there I remember by Farina is some notes on a book called something like the virtual something or other, it had a green cover certainly. But look how long this is taking to load in. This is loading in probably a couple of thousand words of straight text and it's taking quite a while even off a memory based device. There we are, there's a whole load of notes I made in that book all written up on the Atari portfolio years and years and years and years and years and years ago. When you finish your word processor just press escape will bring you out. I sometimes did that by accident. Um, and you could go into, for example, other programs. Worksheet here is a spreadsheet. So we go into worksheet. There we are, this little worksheet. And I could type in some numbers, say, I don't know, 34. 
and the magic number, which obviously is 67. And then we could type in a formula. This is a spreadsheet which worked in the way Lotus 1, 2, 3 did. The first really popular spreadsheet. I'd go say at sum and then say a1 dot dot and then uh, a2 and the bracket and it would work look and we can prove it because we could turn 34 into I don't know 56 and our, uh, our spreadsheet would work and this was an amazing thing the portfolio did it allowed you to carry around in your pocket a working spreadsheet Right, some of you may be thinking, how did I make notes on uh, this PC and then transfer them to another device? Uh, did I have a reader, for example, for the card that went in here? Well, you could buy those readers, but they were very expensive. So what I did, I transferred files using uh, one of these. This is a, a parallel port lead. You may remember those if you're of a certain age. And what you did is you took the device and you uh, took off this little cover at the end and you plugged in one of these, which goes in like, like that, clips in. And there we now have our uh, Atari portfolio, but it's equipped with this parallel port interface on the end. And this has got, as you can see, a, a, a parallel socket. Now specifically, it's got a female socket. And if you look at the standard uh, parallel lead, it has a, a male and female on it. And you may remember or know the actual socket on the back of a PC was also female. So we have to deal with that. And so I've got here a gender changer, which if we just put that on like that, then we can now in theory, we'll get it on properly. Old connectors took a bit of proper connection, didn't they? And in theory, I can now connect in my uh, parallel port lead. And if we're very lucky, I'm gonna get this to talk to a modern PC. Okay, we're now all set for file transfer. I've got the Atari portfolio linked up via its parallel adapter and a parallel lead to a PC which is running a Windows XP and which also happens to have a parallel port. So if we turn on the Atari portfolio, we go into its little uh, menu and we go down to uh, file transfer and then turn this into a server. And then I'll go to the PC where I'm running a command prompt in administrator mode so I can actually do this. And I'm going to run a command called Transfolio, which I've installed on this PC, which is basically an updated version of the Atari Portfolio Transfer Utility, which will run on machines running beyond Windows 98. So I'm giving it a few parameters basically to actually transfer all the files from the card on the portfolio, a colon, to see Atari upload. Let's see if that works. Waiting for portfolio, seems to be working. Here's the folder we're actually transferring into. There it is, look, the files seem to be arriving okay. It's quite a slow process, as you can see though. You can actually see each individual byte transferring across. This is the kind of speed we used to have to move data around on a PC, how things have changed over the years. But there we are, it's transferred. Now if we open up one of these files, so the battery text file we looked at earlier, there is some data written years and years ago, over 20 years ago, on the type portfolio, some of this, which is now transferred across to a modern PC. The Atari portfolio had a great following for many years and even appeared in the film Terminator 2. In my next classic PC video, I'm going to look back to the Apple Newton message pad 110. But now that's it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.